and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. And you bet your life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me, and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomy, or so handsome you can see. It's powerful, and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That old fogey. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples, and if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is spit fat. Well, I'm a dirty bird. <laughs> and you look like George Goble. Cramp, <laughs> duck. Mr. Fenneman, on with it, huh? So, Groucho, Mrs. Floretta McCutcheon, Mr. Frank Barber are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, keep in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Floretta McCutcheon and Frank Barber, eh? Mrs. McCutcheon? May I call you Floretta, Mrs. McCutcheon? It's a pretty name, and I like to get friendly early. Well, most of my friends call me Mac. Oh, okay, Mac. <laughs> How old are you, Mac? Sixty-six years. I wouldn't have dared to ask uh, Floretta that question. <laughs> sixty-six. Well, you're a very bouncy-looking sixty-six, Mac. I presume your family has grown and you have time on your hands. Do you have any hobbies that might be of interest? Uh, well, I've had the same one for about thirty years. The same hobby for mm -hmm. thirty years? Well, so have I. Do you suppose it could be the same hobby? What is yours? Well, mine's bowling. Oh. Well, that's where we part. Uh, <laughs> mine happens to be growing small avocado trees. <laughs> no avocados, just small avocado trees. <laughs> Are you a, a pretty good bowler? Well, I was once upon a time, uh, Groucho. Really? I uh, traveled over a good part of the United States. Uh, a bowling ball? Yes, with a bowling ball, oh, rolling, yeah. mm -hmm. rolling exhibitions with uh, local bowlers. You must have been a pretty good bowler. You you say you put on exhibitions? That's right. Did you ever break par? Yes. Or whatever they call it? In the well, uh, in bowling, par is a 300 or perfect score. Uh -huh. And uh, I rolled 10 of them in different places throughout the country. Really? And uh, I had 11 800 uh, three-game scores. And I uh, had an all-time average of for 8,000 games of 201 for the 10 years that I gave exhibitions. You, you're the Jack Dempsey, Ben Hogan, and Babe Ruth of bowling, huh? Give me your hand, uh, Mac. I want to shake hands. You, you ever bowl yourself? Uh, well, I, yes. I, I didn't bowl myself. I used a ball. I, uh, <laughs> I tried it myself. I never could get down the alley. I was always in the gutter. Even when I wasn't bowling. <laughs> Mr. Father, that's you? Precisely. Uh, you're, uh, you're Frank, eh? Frank, that's right. Frank Father, eh? That's Something right. like Frank Footer, isn't it? That's right. Uh, I thank you not to be too frank on this show. <laughs> you can be earnest, but in television, there's an unwritten law that nobody is ever frank. No. Now that we passed that hiatus, where are you, uh, <laughs> where are you from, Frank? I come from Italy, uh, a small town called Comiso. Are you married, Frank? That's right, I am. Uh, you are married, huh? Well, uh, where were you when the trap was sprung? In other words, uh, where did you meet your wife? I met my wife in Italy. She was a tourist at the time, and... Uh, tourist? That's right. Oh. It's just... well, what was your reaction to this American girl the first time you saw her? Do, what? You, do you remember? It was the love at first sight. My heart was in fire. Your hat was in fire? <laughs> <laughs> They wore a beret most of the time. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you take your hat off as you were wooing a girl? So, <clears throat> and, uh... You choose to ignore this, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Frank? I am a barber in the Nickelback Hotel here in Hollywood. 
You're a barber at the Nicker? Oh, I had a close shave at the Hotel Nickabaka one night. <laughs> That's another story, which I don't care. <laughs> well, how are you getting along with your wife, Frank, after that romantic courtship? Uh, do you ever have any arguments? Well, once in a while we do, especially when uh, I look at some other woman and she doesn't like the idea. <laughs> On Sunday, we'll take a ride to some place, uh -huh. and see if by accident you look someone, and then we start to fight on this. <laughs> Is she driving while you're casing the sidewalk? <laughs> I just a look at him. Now, who wins these little spats, you or your wife, when you have a... Well, Oh, Ursula, I, I have the last word. You have the last word? I'm sure you do. And what is the last word? Help? No. <laughs> well, she, she says, shut up. And I say, all right. <laughs> well, normally, I don't approve of a woman telling her husband to shut up. But uh, after an old joke like that, I think she's perfectly justified. <laughs> Well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but it's time to play your life. Uh, bet your life, huh? Now, uh, you selected geography, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Okay, $70. All right. $70. $7? $70. Oh, $70. $70. Seven oh. Well, what, uh, $70, what formerly was known as the Sandwich Island? Sandwich Island. Talk it over. Western? Western? Hmm? Western? Western Indies? No, it's the Hawaiian Islands. Well, lost half your hundred dollars, you now have fifty dollars. That's where the oil of sandwich invented the sandwich. This is completely inaccurate, but I like to give our little historical facts. Uh, we take the eighty dollars now. You take the eighty dollars. Okay. You've been very successful with the seventy, <laughs> and I'll take the <laughs> Okay, what country is uh, directly south of Denmark? Uh, Sweden. No, I assure you can tell from the groan by the audience that it's Germany. You lost half your 50, you now have $25. Well, your wife gets a hold of you tonight, huh? We've been successful to get the $90, please. We take the name Now you might as well. You're riding high. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're just shooting along here. In what river do you find the Thousand Islands? The Amazon. Give us an answer. Niagara. Huh? Niagara. The Saint Lawrence. You now have twelve dollars fifty cents. We oh, shoot for one hundred dollars. Oh. All right, for $100, San Jose is the capital and only large city of what Central American country? San Jose is uh, the capital of uh, uh, San Jose. I know that. <laughs> Costa Rica. I sure thought you were going to say Australia, but it's Costa Rica. Wind up with $112.50. Well, thanks, That's good luck, and so to Plymouth Dealers. I'm glad you won that last one. <laughs> uh, since you are watching this program, you are obviously a discriminating person. Now then, uh, watch some other discriminating people. This is the Beverly Hills Hotel, one of the smartest of America's smart gathering places. And this is the smartest of the smart cars, the new 1955 DeSoto Firefly Sportsman. DeSoto symbolizes the exciting forward look, with motion expressed in every line. And notice the dramatic color sweep that accents its beauty. The new DeSoto is beautiful inside, too. Rich matte lace, genuine leather, and luxurious nylon woven with silver metallic thread. But to really know this car, you must drive it. So flip the flight control lever and go. Then you'll really appreciate the new DeSoto. You'll love DeSoto's big wraparound full vision windshield. It gives you the best front and side visibility of any windshield. You'll like DeSoto's new power flight takeoff. A smooth surge of instant power. And you'll like the way that power sweeps you over the steepest hill. The smart new DeSoto is the car you'll be proud to drive to the Smart Bel Air Country Club, or anywhere. The new DeSoto. Smartest 
of the smart car. So be smart. See the new 1955 DeSoto at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow. And when you do, tell them uh, you know who sent you. Well, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Betty Likens. Her partner is Mr. Joel H.V. Striegel. So folks, if you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your best of life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Betty Likens, I'll start with you. Are, are you married? No. You're not married? No. Are you interested in mar matrimony? And if not, how did you ever get to be a girl? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am interested in matrimony if the right man came along. There is no such thing, Betty. Huh? There isn't? Take what you can get. Huh? <laughs> Well, I'll keep my eye open, and I'll let you know if anything shows up. Okay, Groucho. Do you have a job, Betty? Yes, I do. I'm a ground hostess with airport transit at both Lockheed and International Terminal. Hmm. Depending on the smog, huh? Yes. <laughs> Your name is uh, Joe or Mr. Strudel, huh? No, Striegel. Joel H.V. Striegel. Striegel, huh? How did you meet Mr. Strudel? I haven't met Mrs. Striegel yet. Well, have you met Mrs. Strudel? No, no, Groucho, I haven't met her either. You, you're not married, huh? No, I'm not married yet. Have you ever been married? Never, Groucho. What is the secret, sir? I mean the secret of your single blessedness. <laughs> well, perhaps it's because I'm looking for the perfect girl. Betty, take a bow. Is there any specific thing you're looking for? Young, beautiful, rich? Yes, uh, there's one requirement that I'd insist upon, and that is that she be a vegetarian. <laughs> well, and how would you meet her? <laughs> I beg your pardon, what was that? <laughs> I said vegetarian. You mean you want a horse doctor? <laughs> No, I said vegetarian. Betty, I know this sounds silly, but this may be the most important decision of your life. Do so. <laughs> you like carrots? Yes. String beans? Yes. Well, if you got married, would you be willing to spend your honeymoon at the farmer's market? No. <laughs> well, let's take a big holiday. For example, how did you observe Thanksgiving? You shoot off fireworks? <laughs> No, I enjoyed a delicious Thanksgiving dinner with did, huh? well. more than 150 people who were members or those who attended the dinner of the Los Angeles Vegetarian Society. Uh -huh. well, what did you have to eat? Balto? No, we had a Balto? delicious uh, roast of uh, raw nuts and some uh, <laughs> vegetables. And we also had a salad with several different kinds of dressing, and we had we had something that uh, tasted like cranberries, but wasn't. And, uh, <laughs> what was it? I still have to find that out. <laughs> well, uh, you say you had, uh... And then, I almost forgot, Groucho, uh, the previous Thanksgiving, and of course we have a different meal at each Thanksgiving. Well, I should think so, I don't <laughs> <laughs> We had a delicious soybean roast. At the previous Thanksgiving dinner. A soybean roast. Instead yes. of turkey, eh? That's right. I wonder which part of a soybean roast goes over the fence last. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joel, I've kidded you, but I really didn't mean it. I know there's a whole lot to be said for your philosophy. And right after the show, Betty and I will have a big steak at the House of Murphy. <laughs> Is that all right with you, Betty? Oh, fine. Now let's play your bets of life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $112.50. The secret word is paper. Now, you chose as your category familiar expressions using the name of animals or birds. Right. Now, one answer between you, your partners. Now, what are you going to start with? Uh, the $50 question. $50. What is the expression using the name of an animal or bird that means a compartment in a desk used for the storing of papers? Pigeonhole, isn't it? Pigeonhole. Pigeonhole is right, yeah. You now have $150. Now what do you want, Troy? 
Seventy. 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 All right. What is the expression used in the name of an animal or bird that means a large barrel or cask? What is a large barrel or cask? As an animal's uh, or a bird's name attached to it. That is a tough one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. Well, you know it when you hear it. It's hogshead. Oh, oh no. That's bad. You lost half your hundred and fifty. You now have seventy-five dollars. All right. Now what are you going to go for? Sixty. 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 What is the expression using the name of an animal or bird that means the inclined frame or bumper in the front of a locomotive? The front part of a locomotive. Mm, I didn't know that. Mm. The witch? No, it's not that. See, if you weren't a vegetarian, you would know it was cow catcher. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, here's your last chance to beat the other couples, and I don't get discouraged. You have thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Now, what are you going to go for? Big one or a little one? Oh, a little one. <laughs> All right, make it the forty. Forty. What is the expression using the name of an animal or bird that means that the feet turn inward? Pigeon toad. Pigeon toad is right. Pigeon toad is right. <laughs> $77.50. Thanks, and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. Sorry, he didn't win more. Thank you. Joshua, we, um, we heard about a very unusual couple in town, so I asked them to come down to our show, and they're here tonight. Uh, Prince and Princess Amago, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? A prince and a yes. princess on our show? Well, what do you know? Oh. Well, welcome, welcome for the Soda Plymouth dealers. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and, and take home an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Prince, it's a pleasure to have you here. May I reciprocate my happiness, sir? Well, you certainly may. You realize, of course, I'm just a commoner. You aren't going to jeopardize your royal standing uh, talking to me, are you? By no means. Well, you'll go a long way to find anybody that's commoner than I am. <laughs> prince, Prince Inago, now, just, just where do you do your princing? Where are you a prince, principally? I mean, in what principality? I'm as unprincipled as they come. Huh? Well, in the Belgian Congo, uh, in a little place called Tairira. Tairira? Yes. I never heard of that. Uh... It is roughly um, about uh, 200 um, kilometers uh, southwest. Of oh. Well, since I've never heard of that, that uh, makes it pretty clear up to now. Now, That's how many real. members uh, of this tribe are there, Prince? There are approximately three million. I see. Well, it's quite a tribe, huh? May I ask how old you are, Prince? I'm 30 and 5. 30 and 5. That makes you, let's see, uh... Bionoxic, <laughs> oxendrysic, uh... <laughs> you must be 35, huh? Precisely correct, sir. You see, I'm not accustomed to uh, conversing with Princess Prince, so if I fracture a protocol occasionally, I trust you'll understand. Yes, sir. For example, Princess, uh, would I be beheaded if I asked your age? I'm 20 and 7. 20 and 7. Now, let's yes. see. Uh, <laughs> fine, fancy, dry and fancy, <laughs> Stevens, you must be 27, huh? Quite right, sir. Well, Prince, uh, you say you came from the Congo. In which part of the Congo were you born? Is there any place we'd recognize, like uh, Ava Gardner or Ines Hemingway? <laughs> Take care. The real surprise uh, lies in this particular answer. I was born in East St. Louis, or East St. Louis, Illinois. I have... Uh, Don't go away, folks. I'm just as curious as you are. <laughs> Not often we get an African prince with a British accent who was born in East St. Louis. <laughs> Well, Prince, it, it's quite obvious that you weren't born to the royal people in East St. Louis. Uh, suppose you tell us your story, eh? Huh? I should be most happy to do so, sir. I was born an undistinguished commoner. So I ran away from home. I went to New York City. I went into Horn and Horton and applied for the job as a bus boy. About six months thereafter, 
I met a Britisher, and for three years he taught me Latin, Greek, um, and Shakespeare. This was in the automat? Yes, sir. <laughs> At his home on 72nd Street. Oh. And I read quite a few books, some 200, and it aroused my interest about Africa. I may say at this particular juncture, Mr. Marx, that I um, um, sort of hitchhiked, so to speak, into Africa. That is, I um, was a stowaway, both of us. It's a most unusual story, but a very true one. I see. Now, Prince, what are your plans for the future? Do you and the princess intend to stay here, or do you plan to return to the autumn, uh, to Africa? <laughs> <laughs> well, I propose through our native rhythm dancing to, with the help of cafes, um, theaters, night television, club. nightclub, and possibly um, one of your extraordinary parties. Uh, you might one time have the need of us. We have five Congo drummers in orchestra. It's a most fascinating thing to see and hear. Uh, to get enough money to go back. Oh. Oh, well, well, could you show us a few steps, Princess? Just enough for us to get the idea? I should be most happy to do so. However, my dignity uh, is displaced somewhat here and that I do not have my drum with me. Oh, you need but a drum. any tool would do to beat her on since um, in Africa... Uh, a drum what about a screwdriver? Would that be any good? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> have we got a, sto a stool or something around here that the Prince could use, huh? Will you knock that stool pigeon off there and bring the stool out? Put it over there, uh, George, huh? Sure. Okay. Okay. Now, do you need any music with this, uh, Prince? No, the music comes from my hand, sir. Oh. Princess, that was wonderful, and the uh, prince is no slouch with the flammadiddles either, huh? <laughs> well, Prince, since you're interested in raising money, perhaps we'd better get down to business. And incidentally, I hope you make it back to Africa successfully and that you can achieve your ambitions there. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life, huh? In the race for the $2,000, the first couple is still leading with $112.50. Now, you selected the dictionary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. And remember your partners. One answer between you. Now, what are you going to start with? You can start with 10, 20, 50, all the way up to 100. Let us be circumspect, John. 75. 75, no. 70 or 80? 80. 80? Okay. When one state surrenders an alleged criminal to another state, what do you call this legal process? When one state surrenders an alleged criminal to another state, what do you call this legal process? Um... Talk it over. Oh. I knew the name very well. Let's see. Oh. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's extradition. Extradition. You know, to extradite someone. Oh, my well, you still have fifty dollars. I don't get discouraged. You got a long ways to go. Now, what are you going to stir? Try this time. Fifty. Fifty. All right. What is a cudgel? A cudgel can be a bat. That's, that's good enough. It's a club or a steak, but we'll give it the unbat, bat, huh? Well, you now have $100. Two cents. Small ones are easy, the big ones are hard. 40. 40. 40? What is the Latin expression that means and so forth, and so forth, and so forth? Ad infinitum or ad, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> You now have one hundred forty dollars. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, what are you going to go for? Easy ones, little money, hard ones, big money. What? Sixty. Sixty. All right. What is the word for an open excavation where building stone 
limestone, slate, or granite is obtained, where you dig it out of the ground. And what is the word for an open excavation where building stone, limestone, slate, or granite is obtained? Uh, where, do you get, where do you get these stones from? Where do you dig them from? An open excavation. A tomb. No, it's a quarry. Quarry, yes. And you uh, wind up with seventy dollars. Well, thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Sorry you blew the last one, huh? <laughs> That means that Mrs. McCutcheon and Hi, Mr. Audience. Father, with $112.50, in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. I want you to watch closely now, and you'll learn the best ways there are to describe the new choice this year of two great DeSoto V8s, the 185 horsepower Fire Dome at a new lower price, or the new DeSoto Prestige car, the 200 horsepower Fire Flight. Both great cars, styled for modern drivers. Stop in and see them tomorrow, and tell them Groucho sent you. Here's a little couple Groucho, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, right in here. For two thousand dollars, tell me. In the poem by Longfellow, who is the sweetheart of Hiawatha? Talk it over. All right. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Pocahontas. No. No. You were flighty with her, but it's many ha ha. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand five hundred dollars. Well, they lost the big money. How much they win the quiz? Uh, I won one hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. Well, quiz. congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs> Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow, and when you do. Tell him Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. <laughs> George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. Drive slow in rain, sleet, or snow.